Uh, my name is Sven Mantel. I'm the CTO and uh, co-founder of a small startup from Stockholm, Sweden called Tor Music Research. I was uh, very honored when the art are when you guys <laughs> asked me to come here and give a talk today. And uh, um, yeah, I, I came here, I put on my DTS t-shirt to try to fit in. And so far it has been fine. So the name of the talk is Score Cleaner, a string drum music notation software. And to make you understand what uh, this is all about, I will start out by playing a short movie for you. And by that 
time, I got my Master of Science diploma, and also I got the, a real job in the computer industry. So therefore, Sven continued his doctoral thesis on his own, and as part of it, he learned how to program in Common Lisp. Time passed, and Sven made progress in his research, and also developed an early prototype of what today is Core Cleaner. When Sven finally presented his doctoral dissertation in 2004, people showed interest in, interest in his early prototype. And they said things like, well, I don't quite understand your research, but that program that you use, I really want it. And that was the first sign of commercial potential of Sven's research. This led to that Sven and I joined forces again in 2006, after a break of about 15 years. I started working part-time, and in 2008 we founded the company Dormio Music Research. And this name is a marriage of uh, music and technology. Do, Re, from Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, combined with Mi, from the abbreviation of Music Information Retrieval. We released the first version of Score Cleaner only for Mac OS X in the summer of 2011. It was very limited, since it didn't have any editing features. It was marketed as a complement to more layout, like uh, notation software like Sibelius and Finale. Now, two years later, Score Cleaner is available for both Mac OS X and Windows, and has enough editing functionality to satisfy most people's needs. Here's an example of a score created in Score Cleaner. It's very small though. So, what programming languages do we use? Well, I told you we use Common Lisp, but we also use C and C++. And that's for the audio engine, and also for operating system interfacing. And the same with Objective-C. And why do we choose Common Lisp? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it was due to Common Lisp's popularity at the Department of Speech, Music and Hearing at the Royal Institute of Technology at the time of my master's thesis, 92-93. We felt comfortable with Common Lisp and haven't had any reason to change it yet. So we started out using Macintosh Common Lisp in 92, and then around 2007-2008 we switched to Lispworks. And why Lispworks? Well, there are some reasons why we chose Lispworks. We wanted to target both Mac OS X and Windows. We, needed, uh, we wanted an integrated development environment for Mac OS X. We needed a good licensing model and good documentation. And what we also eventually got using Lispworks that we didn't know at the moment was excellent support. So, do we use any third-party software? Yes, we surely do. And you recognize many of these from earlier talks today. And the authors of some of this software can be found in the audience here today. As you probably know. And the third party, what formats? Well, ASD of systems for the common list code. We also have command line programs, Mac OS X frameworks and VLIPs, and Windows DLLs. with it using ASD load system, the Lispworks foreign language interface, Lispworks Objective-C interface, and also the common foreign function interface. And these interfaces are great when you get them up and running, but my experience is that it may take a lot of time and effort, depending on what you're trying to interface with. Today's Score Cleaner is a 32-bit program, and it has legacy reasons. We 
used to use MediaShare, which is only supported on 32-bit. Uh, but now it's more like my bad conscience. We should really have investigated more about what 64-bit could have given us. But it's also a question of cost, since this works, 64-bit is more expensive than the 32-bit version. When it comes to cross-platform GUI, we use uh, the Lisperx copy. It's a good idea, but since we don't since we don't have the copy source code, it is very hard to solve some problems when they arrive. But we use uh, copy extensively. And how much code is this? Well, the uh, heart of uh, the company, the heart of the program, is uh, the analysis. Music analysis, and that's uh, 2,000, 220,000 lines of code. And then the rest of the program is 45,000 lines of code, and the third party libraries are 60,000 lines. So, that was some information about Score Cleaner and the history behind it. But there's more. Now I would like to show you something that we released just a few months ago. And I think this is best illustrated with a video too. Inspiration can surprise you, because great ideas just happen. Score Cleaner Notes lets you capture musical ideas in the moment. It's the only mobile app that can translate a recording into a musical score. Just press record and start singing, playing, or humming. Its unique technology, developed from years of research, means it can understand and translate your rhythms and melodies into sheet music. It even syncs through the cloud, so later you can take the idea further, or easily pass the music onto that friend. The great cello player. Score cleaner notes for iPhone. Now everyone can write music. <laughs> And also we use HTML5 and JavaScript. 
and that's for the web interface to score to in the cloud. And then we use MATLAB for the audio analysis. And who made this possible? Well, here is the development team. It's Sven Albeck, the professor, professor who is uh, working on music analysis. Soros Chen, working on the cloud backend and frontend. Anders Elsson, audio analysis. And myself, working with desktop, etc. Hans Hörlund, audio engine. Jonathan Lilidov, iOS development. Erik Rundström, desktop Google and Peter Silver, notes design. So, uh, these guys are not all employed by the company. Five of us are, and the others are consultants. What about the future? Well, we're working on polyphonic audio input. You know, multiple notes at a time. And that's a natural choice, since automatic notation from polyphonic input is sort of the holy grail when it comes to notation. Polyphonic audio can mean a lot of uh, many different things, but it can mean input from one instrument or input from multiple polyphonic instruments, and we're aiming for the latter. Of course, we have a lot of challenges. One challenge is that we have to perfect, perfect the user experience of working on the desktop. As you saw in the first movie, it's uh, really simple to get started, <coughs> but still. You may have to do some editing after playing, after recording. You want to add additional voices, etc. etc. And since we market Scorching a Desktop as a simpler and faster alternative to our music notation software, we have to be very pedagogic in the user interaction. Another challenge that we're uh, starting with right now is uh, how can we put the music analysis on iOS and Android? As you saw, there was a lot of list, uh, common list code, the music analysis. So that's uh, something we are thinking of. Uh, and today, the music analysis is in the cloud, it's not on the device. But we would like to put it on the device in order to distribute the load. So therefore, I'm going to speak with Wes and some other guys here. But if you have any input regarding how we can put our the lot of common list code in iOS and Android, any help is greatly appreciated. Klaus, any questions? Cloud backend for this service, which accepts uh, streaming uh, from the devices. Do you also use List for that, or do you develop it in something else? Uh, for the streaming, you mean? Yeah, for the streaming backend. No, we service. don't use List for that. Uh, on the server side, we have no JS, and, uh, and on the client side, we stream HTTPS. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have One thing that would be, I think, a killer feature for multiple notation software and additional software would be to have access uh, both to the visual score itself and also programmatically. 
something that I miss from the traditional score editors, for instance, would be the ability to write a, a list program that will modify the, the score itself instead of having you know, to click a hundred times everywhere. It could be going to do like themselves. Do, do you plan on having something like that? Um, that, that did did you guys get the question? It was uh, why not have both the uh, graphical user interface um, and also a programmatic interface to notation? And uh, no, we, we don't have any plans for that. Our plans are, you know, what we can do with this technology is that we can let somebody just start playing without doing any presets of any kind. In other programs, you have to set up, okay, what's the, the meter that I'm going to play? Uh, what's the tempo? You have to play with the metronome, etc., etc. So we want to keep the simplicity because uh, with the simplicity, this, this uh, could be a program to use for anybody starting, you know, learning notation, etc., etc. So the more professional product you're speaking about, that's not the first goal for us. Um, we have um, the, the music analysis <coughs> understands when we can apply swing feeling and not. So in the desktop program, we have a simple switch saying if you want to view it as straight eights, for example, but listen to it in swing feeling. And uh, You can share it, 
Uh, you can add a name of the melody, and you can uh, can sync it to the desktop version. But to continue working with it, you do it in the desktop version. And uh, I saw that uh, uh, it automatically uh, generates the key of the of the tune. Yeah. So if you sing two things, they it might. It, it might say this is in this key, but the other is in another key. But it's very simple to, to translate uh, transpose in the desktop app. Yeah, that's about all. Thank you so much.